So, Sonic and Lego Dimensions. Let's talk about that now. The first thing I notice is that weird off-tone fake version of the intro song. First, I thought this was done as a purpose, that the level starts as a parody of a fake Sonic game, like we're supposedly playing Sonic Triple Trouble 7 on the Sega Mega Saturn Cast Gear or something, a fake sequel that then gets interrupted halfway through by the real plot. However, I quickly learned that nope, the title music isn't scrambled and weird on purpose, well at least not for parody purposes. The songs from the classic Sonic games are all weird cheap knockoff versions for copyright reasons. Not remixes even, just weird fake versions. I questioned the uh, complexity of Sonic copyrights before, like when they couldn't use Sonic but only Bean and Bark and Fighters Mega Mix. So yeah, far as music's concerned, you'll only be hearing Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 tracks and the occasional weird fake version of a classic Sonic song. Sometimes I kinda like them, their fake Green Hill Zone tune is neat. But some are terrible, like the fake Carnival Zone theme. It's cute. I love the rendition of Chemical Plan Zone. I suppose they couldn't use the Sega Mega Drive Genesis instruments for the same copyright reasons. Now the songs remind me more of mid-90s PC games soundtracks, which is probably more nostalgic for me anyway, so cool. The gameplay is a bit weird, as it's not programmed as a straight Sonic game. It's more that they take the already existing LEGO gameplay engine and then add some Sonic stuff on top of that. So the controls are still in 3D even during the 2D sections, which can be a little disorientating. Especially when you do the time trial mission where you have to get through the rings as quickly as possible. Oh god, that mission. <laughs> okay, again, I don't know if it's just a Wii U version, but I would recommend people not to do this optional mission until after you already played Sonic for a while and get used to him. See, right at the beginning of the first level, there's a side mission you can do where you have to go through loops as fast as possible. Well, and <laughs> doing that mission is not a good way to get your first impression of this level pack. Whenever you start one of those time trial missions, the game gets slowed down, frame rate goes down, and Sonic's controls start slipping. And even when the game's optimal, I still need to get used to this hybrid of LEGO and Sonic gameplay, so my brain is constantly hopping between the two logics of these games. Not to mention what Luke said, despite a 2D camera, it's still 3D gameplay, so if you accidentally hold your control stick at an angle, it's possible you run past the rings. Which sucks, because I always wanted to see Sonic done in a Mario 3D Land style. 3D gameplay, but with a stationary camera. This game does that, but the level design doesn't cooperate with it. The level design is closely based on the original classic games, which in normal circumstances would be great, but with the current gameplay attached to Sonic, that doesn't quite work. Again, shame. For now, I suppose the fan game classic Sonic 3D Adventure is the better example of how to do such a thing. I like the art design. At first, I wasn't sure about how the levels looked. Green Hills looks so empty and generic, but now playing it in depth, I kind of like it. They have a very good color design, nice bright colors that are a little alien. The grass is just a little weird. The factories have nice neon colors everywhere. The mountain, a nice warm red. I really like the color use. I wish this was more what Sonic Lost World did. Cartoony bright, but still a little grit to it. Solid context, solid environments, techno stuff, desert rocks. Alien and bright, but still grounded. Much nicer mix between all the Sonic elements. And it's neat to finally be able to control Sonic through a completely 3D version of the classic games for the first time. Some fan games already did that, Sonic Robo Blast and Utopia. But officially... And I agree, it is an immense joy to race around in Sonic in a big 3D environment without being stuck in corridors or floating islands in the sky like in most Sonic games. It's very satisfying and awesome to run across water, that's a neat touch. And with the lock-on system where you can uh, homing attack enemies, Sonic plays surprisingly close to the 3D games despite running on the LEGO engine. But oh boy, those time trial rings. 
They're near unplayable on the Wii U version. As soon as I start them, the frame rate drops, Sonic controls barely work suddenly. Also, a weird quirk, fighting. I, would, I wanted to love fighting with Sonic because his moves look really cool, but there's a problem. A lot of the LEGO characters always have this thing that when you hold the attack button, you get a secondary attack where you can aim, and so does Sonic. However, with him, the attack triggers way too easily, so it's constantly when I'm mashing the attack button during an intense fight, Sonic constantly locks into his secondary attack mode. I don't have that with any other characters, but it's, it's really annoying. Right, but we wanted to see the story and how the characters are used. Now you might be wondering, why would you even care for the story in a friggin Lego game? It's non-canon, it's silly, it's written by unofficial writers. However, weird as it seems, this game will actually give us the best view of where the series is at this point. Yeah, seeing the characters in a more neutral setting and not exempted in comedy sketch show of the week, and written by people with experience of actually representing the franchises and not mutating it into their own desires. And unlike Generations, there's more life and weight to the proceedings. Generation just felt like a static museum. Here's this level. Here's this character. Well, here I feel a little bit more weight to it. I do still prefer Generations gameplay though, but the presentation is way better here. Story feels more active, more energetic. And it has what I haven't seen in a Sonic game for a long time. An exciting climax! Well, okay, still not super exciting climax, but hey, fighting a giant Chaos Zero on a space station, with unexpected heroes showing up, Eggman still trying to double-cross Sonic, it's a lot more exciting than any of the other climaxes we had that always felt unearned, weak, lame, low energy. Yeah. I said something boom fire and ice had a finale that was earned and felt proper that's correct but then again fire and ice also had a story about absolutely nothing of interest it's just a simple straightforward okay ending to a dull but okay story lego dimension is way closer to the spirit of the originals and thus has a way cooler climax though still not quite as epic as i hoped when I played the Doctor Who level and saw how amazing and epic the Weeping Angels and especially the Dalek battle were, I had high hopes. I was surprised how the LEGO games had the balls to play some of those things straight. And that's still true to Sonic Dimensions. The finale is mostly played straight, so pretty cool. But right, this story is nothing special. It's mostly an excuse to make jokes and references. More interesting is their interpretation of the characters. Now, Sonic and friends had had a severe identity crisis for a while. Their personalities have shuffled a lot, sometimes because of the new writers, or because some personalities were considered undesirable, so much so that we've been confused where the characters are at this point. Is Sonic still the upbeat hero who loves adventure, or a world-weary sarcastic git, I mean grump? Is Knuckles a devoted serious guardian, whose gullibility and hot-headedness causes him to make stupid mistakes, or is he just brain dead stupid? Is Amy still madly in love with Sonic or whatever the hell her personality is supposed to be in the other incarnations? Is still skewed or a narcissistic little bitch? Eggman a theatrical man-child dictator or demented old man? And so on and so on and so on. So here's Lego Dimensions, who does a very good job nailing the core and essence of all the other characters. Besides Aquaman, who seems surprisingly self-aware and self-destructive, even he's laughing at himself, or King of Neptune, giving their spin, so I'm very curious. Well, one problem is, Sonic Dimension's favourite joke seems to be, character says line from Adventure Games Verbatim. Their second favourite joke is, character says lyric of Sonic song Verbatim. So if that's your kind of humour, you'll have a grand time. <laughs> yeah. Because of that, the cast is a weird hybrid between their Sonic Boom incarnation and their Adventure incarnation. I kind of like how they are in LEGO Dimensions, except for one terribly brain-killingly cringy fight sequence between Sonic and Eggman that goes beyond even Sonic Colors and terrible joke writing. Although at least it happens during the boss fight and on a long cutscene where everyone just stands around doing nothing. Outside of that one scene, I like the cast. Except Knuckles. <laughs> Let's go through them one by one. Sonic. Well, half his dialogue is him just quoting music lyrics or repeating lines he said in the adventure games. It creates this weird effect, even though him repeating lines is supposed to be a joke, the lines themselves are just lines. So most of the time, Sonic speaks normal, but with words he said before, so it's a joke. Does that make sense? Either way, as a result of most of his dialogue being adventure quotes, he's the upbeat, adventure-loving guy again. Sure, extremely lots of painful, cringe-inducing dialogue whenever he's with Eggman, but at least no longer consistently detached and uninterested. 
he's invested again. Roger Craig Smith sounds a lot more upbeat and energetic. That helps. Oh, and yes, they made a joke about Sonic and a car. Although surprisingly, by providing a reason why Sonic likes driving a car, instead of a fourth wall breaking, why do I drive a car statement? Which is more natural. So I approve. Tails is interesting. He acts the way I absolutely loathe. And then most of his dialogue is him constantly praising himself and going on about what a genius he is. In the adventure field, anyway, in the story, he is pretty much just to explain what's going on, guy. But in the adventure field, he's not stop talking about how smart and awesome he is. But where in Lost World, I wanted to smash his smug face to a bloody pulp. Here, I didn't mind it much. I think it's the voice directing. Colleen O'Shaughnessy? Shaughnessy? How do you pronounce that name? Uh, she sounds way more cute and upbeat when she does it this time, even breaking Tails' voice. You did it! My more fist-inclined friends usually take care of situations like that. My strongest muscle is definitely my brain. I don't know, it makes it more endearing. It's so weird, it's like Tails has his modern Sonic self-important asshole personality, but presented with his more cute, innocent adventure era personality, and the mix kinda works. So, okay, fine. As long as Tails is a good voice actress and direction, can work I guess. Shows what good voice directing and acting can do. Amy, does she have another brand new shiny personality this time? Why yes she does. She just can't stick to the same personality for more than one game can she? Despite most of her dialogue being quotes from Sonic Adventure, she says them a lot more aggressive and in a more I'm a woman hear me roar kind of context. So she's a more aggressive hyper feminist this time around. It's kind of like what her personality in Sonic Boom Shattered Crystal was. Except there, she was mostly bored and disinterested and sarcastic. Here, she's more aggressive and focused. So yeah, is this her true personality? Or will her split personality roulette continue to spin in the future? Big Cat is Big Cat, exactly what you expect. Dr. Eggman is the same as he has been the past decade, so mostly quipping. Although he's surprisingly more aggressive here and there, it's the most intense I've heard Mike Pollock. So it actually contains the energy and intensity of the adventure games here and there, but it's rare. Most of the time he's just regular Eggman, and especially in the adventure field, he's in his full-blown Sonic Boom personality, setting up some kind of trap for Sonic, but immediately getting distracted and just hanging around at home. I have to say, I think the first confrontation Eggman has with Sonic is one of the better confrontation scenes I've seen in a long time. The energy and pace is great, the timing, the energy. Eggman says something, Sonic says something, Eggman's distracted, Sonic does things. It's bam 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 bam, I like it. This is the kind of energy I like to see them having. Unfortunately, their best confrontation scene in decades is quickly followed up by their worst... Uh, uh, their Emerald Coast boss fight banter with Sonic Colors on steroids. Although at least it happens during the fight and it's the 10 minute cutscene of them standing around saying stupid nonsense, but... Oof. And these little automation touches like Eggman tossing the emeralds in the background, it's great! That's more the Eggman I want to see, a big child with enormous power instead of an old confused man with no power. Shadow! He's a lot better written here than in Sonic Boom and acts pretty much how I would want him to be. Still focused on the job, is super serious about his promise to Maria, but now using it for good. And in Lego parody style, his mission to do good in the world is with flower arrangement in this case. Okay, fair enough. Actually, I admit I had a brief chuckle hearing Shadow proclaim these were the ultimate flowers. It's the kind of parody jokes I like. It fits with his personality. Shadow takes his task super serious. If he's going to do anything, even if it's flower arranging, he will provide the best quality possible. For Maria, you know, that that's Shadow. Unfortunately, Lego Dimensions kills the joke later by turning it into a running gag and have Shadow add the word of ultimate to every word he utters, which is kind of lame. And Lego Dimensions' key rule about running gags to make sure they culminate or there's a twist or something, otherwise it's just boring repeats. To be fair, I screwed up with that in the Sonic Heroes in Minus Cartoon I made too, but yeah. Oh yeah, and there's this brief joke about his game and using guns and knuckles being irritated and throwing it away. That's neat. I like that they don't use dialogue or stupid fourth wall breaking, just characters being characters, so I approve. Not sure why Knuckles has anything against guns, but oh well. I have to make that joke, I guess. Knuckles. Knuckles, Knuckles, Knuckles. Yeah. He's still the braided, useless moron that he is from Sonic Boom. I mean, sure, they mention he's just gullible. That he was tricked in letting the Master Emerald being stolen again. 
But to wear the real knuckles, indeed gullible and indeed capable of letting the Master Emerald being stolen, would immediately turn into a man on a mission and do everything to kick some ass and get the Master Emerald back. This is brain dead stupid moron knuckles. So instead just beats up random robots to fix his ego and doesn't care about the Master Emerald. <sighs> so yeah, if this is a sign for how the characters are truly like, you can bet Knuckles is just going to remain a complete, utter, useless, idiotic git. Or was it Bob the Echidna? The thing I learned from LEGO Dimensions is that the thing I hate the most about modern Knuckles is his narcissism. That he's a bit stupid and dumb and makes bad decisions, that's fine, it's good, that that's part of his character. I just hate that they make him so ego-obsessed, like he's... Like here, ignoring his duties and just smashing up random robots just to fix up his ego. That's the complete opposite of what Knuckles is about. Eggman is the narcissist. He's the one putting his face on everything and wanting to create his own city. Sonic can have a bit of an ego, Tails and Amy are all about gaining respect and moving up in life, so I can't imagine them having a little bit of a narcissistic streak in them, especially for the sake of parody. But Knuckles is the least narcissistic. Someone with an ego would never have a lonely job isolated from the world. It kind of reminds me of how they treat Batman too. I noticed lately that all modern parody incarnations of Batman always make him super narcissistic. You know, I'm Batman, I'm cool, check me out, I'm the coolest detective, yeah! I always find that weird because to me Batman is more stoic, you know? A parody version of Batman to me would be more the guy who's unflappable, never impressed, always just stands there. He would treat the law, I'm going to arrest you, like, like a Judge Dredd or something. No matter if you send him into a different dimension and there's a Joker on a giant clown robot, Batman's just constantly just... That's Batman to me, a man who sacrifices humanity to become super police officer man, utterly devoted to his obsession. Heck, even Adam West Batman, if I have to describe him in one word, it'd be stoic. Remember, Robin, always brush your teeth. Stop right there, you Cretaceous crooks. Your continuous crime wave will crawl to a stop when you go to jail. Stoic, devoted by duty, not self-obsessed. Although, at least with Batman, I can see where it's coming from. He does say the, I'm Batman. He does name and design every tool he has after his name. So I can imagine there's some narcissism hidden there, although I see it more in him having a super devotion to his mission than an ego thing. Even if it's an ego thing, it should be more subconscious. He shouldn't be aware of it, not proud of it. But with Batman, I understand it's like a wish fulfillment thing. So parody Batman is perhaps less, this is what Batman is truly like, but more, this is how I would behave as I was Batman. And I'd be totally, yeah, I'm Batman, I'm rich, I'm cool. So with Batman getting this treatment, I have some understanding and tolerance for it. But with Knuckles, I don't get it. Why is this his new personality? Why is he Johnny Bravo now? Other than his rap songs, which aren't really supposed to exist in universe, he's the complete opposite of a narcissist. So less, oops, Master Hamilton is stolen again, ho ho, I'll just punch a few robots so I'll feel good about myself again and then I'll masturbate to myself in a mirror, ho ho ho. Parody Knuckles should be more, you know, fighting the entire universe to get his Master Emerald back, this, this super devoted guy. That's more Parody Knuckles, not frigging Johnny Bravo. Oh well, but yeah, Sega Knuckles has gone full brain that shit Knuckles, and yeah, most characters act very much like their Sonic Boom personalities, so it's what I feared. Although at least the voice acting has improved. Sonic sounds more upbeat, Tails is more cute, Eggman is more aggressive, and it really helps in making it more digestible. Add to that that this game has way more energy, spectacle, sense of rhythm and timing, and it's still the best Sonic adventure we had in a very long time, regardless of my nitpicks. Also, I'm fascinated that even in a game that's all about pointing out the tropes and cliches of the games, they still make a joke where I'm supposed to be surprised and delighted that Eggman asks Sonic for help, like that's a shock and that's something that has happened non-stop for decades now. Even when they're being super self-aware, they're not aware that this joke has been overplayed 80,000 times by now. <sighs> so, that was Sonic Generations 1.5. Now there won't be any new Sonic material until Sonic Generations 1.7. Oh boy, it's Green Hill Zone again! How nostalgic! Yeah, look, despite wanting and bitching a lot, <laughs> I, I like LEGO Dimension as a whole and the Sonic level pack. Yeah, that's a lot of fun to be had. Though, for the love of God, get the PlayStation and Xbox version, not the Nintendo version, it's a mess. But uh, yeah, even though the Sonic levels were never super funny to me, the main story of LEGO Dimensions had some great jokes. I love Batman confronting the Scarecrow from Wizard of Oz or the bad guy in a Wild West pistol duo using his staff to make buildings fall from the sky, yet he still acts out like he's shooting a shotgun. Simple things, but it's neat. Ne neat details, great crossover stuff. I like LEGO Dimensions. It's levels, the variation in environments, the art styles, lots of detail and cool stuff. I just wish it was a little bit more stable. Ah, the Wii U. Right. So yeah, that was that. 
See you next time, folks.